Hello lovely people, I'm Kathrian and welcome to my channel. Um, in this video I'm going to make a little bag. Um, I've been wondering what to call it. It's going to be kind of based on the Japanese rice bag. There's another video to that. Um, but it's going to have a circular bottom instead of a square bottom. Um, and I'm going to make it using a cloth twine base. So I think I'm going to probably call it a drawstring bucket bag or something like that. Um, anyway, you'll see what I've decided when the video is uploaded because that will be the title of the video. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so to start with, I, I'm not going to show you from scratch because everything I've, I've made all the components and it's taken a very, very long time and I'd be sitting here for um, probably a week and you'd all have gone to sleep a long time ago. But um, I'll link below to all the other videos on my channel, if you haven't seen them already, that show you how to get these components. So there will be, for the base, um, the video how to make the cloth twine. Um, and then there's another video showing how to make baskets and vessels out of the twine that shows you how to stitch it together. So you need to make yourself um, a round base, which can be any size you want. And I would absolutely recommend that you make the base first and then in order to make the piece which I've got here um, which is going to be it's quite big <laughs> it's quite big which is going to be the um, you know the the sides of the bag it's right up in your face now um, make this to fit the circle because if you make this first because the twining process is so variable I guess you could keep twining and measuring, but it's just better if you make the base first. So that determines the, the size of your bag. So once you've made the base, in order to know how big you need to make your the piece to form the sides, you can do one of two things. You can get your thread core and unthread your needle. Don't do that. You can um, get a cloth tape measure. Actually, you could do one of three things. You could get a cloth tape measure and just measure all the way around. If you don't have a cloth tape measure, you can get a piece of string or a strip of cloth or something and, you know, measure around with that and then lay that flat and measure that. Or if you really like doing maths, you can do some pi calculations. It's very simple for a circle. Um, Stella's heard something and it's now going to go barking. Oh, OK. Um, to find the circumference of a circle, you times the diameter by pi. Now, pi is a number that goes on forever, but if you just use 3.14... Yeah, she is barking. Sorry about that. I've written it down here. So, here's my sum, what I did on paper, because I couldn't find my calculator. Um, so, my piece is 7 inches across, um, and pi is 3.14, so inches. If you're metric, I do apologise. Um, I can't do metric. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> so 7 times 3.14 comes to 21.98, so we'll call it 22 inches. And actually, to double check, because, you know, you don't trust these things even though you know that they're right, I also did the string thing and it was indeed 22 inches. So there you go. So make your base, find the diameter, um, and do the pi calculation or measure, and then you've got the, the size that your, your strip that's going to go round needs to be. Now I then added to that two inches. So I wanted an inch to make two half inch seam allowances each side for when it comes around and it joins together. And I wanted another inch because when you stitch as heavily as I do, it can shrink a little bit. And I'd always rather it was a little bit too big. You see, I haven't done the fancy stitching right to the edge either, so I can always trim some off if I need to. So it's just for wiggle room. So once you've found your circumference, make yourself a piece. And this is made in the same way that I made the cloth pouch. So if you want some ideas how to make your, your side piece, go and have a look at that video. I'll link it down there. Um, and that will be the collage technique. And then I've stitched on that mostly different coloured stitches. Okay, the stitching I've done on this, I've basically gone in both directions with running stitch. So I've done my cloth collage on the background, I've done my invisible base stitch, which is all in the cloth pouch video if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, and I've done um, parallel running stitches using my orts, my little thread nest which is in the Vimto tin, you know. So it's a great way of using up scraps of thread and cloth. 
Um, and then I've done some couching. There's also a video about couching. So this is basically an advert for all my other videos. Um, no, what I hoped it did was it brought all the other techniques together and made a new project, you know, if, that you could try if you, if you wanted something different or if you've already made all the others already. So that's my piece. Height-wise, again, you can just decide for yourself how high you want it. Uh, my piece is, I think it's eight inches high. Well, I think actually I've made it nine inches. Yeah, you think I think I cut it nine inches and it shrunk down to eight and three quarter inches. Um, so I think I'm aiming for it to be somewhere in the region of eight inches high. Uh, I thought that was a nice proportion with the seven inch base. Um, and again, I'll need a seam allowance top and bottom um, because of how I'm going to construct it. But that again is entirely up to you. You could make a. I've made weeny weeny little ones which I've sold, you know, in exhibitions and things. Um, before and I actually don't have a finished one anymore myself because I sold them all so I thought I'll make myself one I'll make myself a bigger one and this will be it <clears throat> so mine's eight inches high so to recap my my circle was seven inches across so my circumference is 22 inches so I've made myself a piece for the sides and I cut my backing cloth 24 inches long by nine inches high and I collage my scraps on and I did all my fancy stitching so that's my outer. So then I want a liner, and I've chosen this lovely piece of eco print that I made last summer because it just happened to be the right length, and I just thought the colours were nice together. So I'm going to just literally, I'm not measuring or rotary cutting or doing any of that stuff. I'm just going to lay that on there like that to match it up. And I'm going to tear. If you don't like the sound of cloth tearing, Put your fingers in your ears for a moment. I'm just going to put a little snip off camera. You can't see, but you know how to snip. And I'm going to tear it also off camera because I need a bit of space. Now this was um, old sheet. It was an old sheet. And it's soft, but at the same time it's, it's quite sturdy. But I do know it is still nice to stitch through. I'm not going to put any wadding or batting or um, felt or woolly blanket or interfacing or anything like that in the middle because I want a squashy bag. But if you want a firmer bag, by all means, you know, you do you. You put something in there if that's what you want. So in order to put the pieces together to go around the edge, I'm going to first of all make a seam along, decide which you want to be the top and which you want to be the bottom. I'm going to make a seam along the bottom you know, just a normal seam, so that then on the outside I've got a nice neat edge which I can then whip stitch round, round my base. So I'm going to just put them right sides together, that's my bottom, um, a bit of lining to decide which way up I want that as well. Well, it's lovely every way, so I'm just going to match that up like that, somewhat, somewhat, somewhat. I'm going to get some of my teeny tiny, I'm going to say the word, applique pins. I know most of the world says applique. It's only us English, apparently, who say applique. Um, anyway, they're clover applique pins or applique pins. I just like them because they're small and well behaved. Um, I'm just going to put a few pins in and then I'm going to stitch along there just with a normal running stitch. In fact, I might do, just for the sake of sturdiness, because it's a bag and it's quite a sizable bag that I don't know what I'm gonna put in it. You know, not house bricks or anything, but you never know, it might need to bear a bit of weight. I might therefore do um, a piecing stitch. There's a proper name for it. Um, basically, you do kind of two running stitches and then a back stitch, and I call it two steps forward, one step back, but I'm sure that's not its proper name. Someone will tell me, I'm sure. Uh, I think I'll do that. So with regards to seam allowance, I'm just going somewhere in the region of half an inch and I'm not going to measure it or anything because um, I don't, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to. And you can't make me. You can't make me. Um, but if you want to, you go for it. So let's do this. I'm just going to make sure, actually, because my backing fabric's a bit longer than my... Um, you know, my, my collage fabrics, I just want to make sure that I'm into them. So I'm going to do a good half inch. I want to start right at the end. Am I, or do I need to leave a bit? 
Mm. I'm going to, do you know what? I'm going to leave a bit. I'm just thinking ahead. I'm going to leave about an inch just because I can always stitch that up again later when I come to sew up the sides. I'm not sure yet if I need to do any trimming. So I'm going to leave about an inch. I'm just, I've got a knot in my thread. I'm just using a normal, it's actually a machine quilting cotton that I don't do machine quilting anymore. Um, but you know, just a normal hand sewing thread. So I'm going to do two steps forward in one go. And then I'm going to do two steps forward again, but instead of jumping straight into the first step, I'm going to do a back stitch about half the width, you know, half the space of the previous stitch. So I'm going to go back, and then I'm going to go one, two, like that. And that is what I call two steps forward, one step back. And like I said, there's probably a proper name for it. But if you get into the rhythm of it, it's quite a nice stitch to do. And it just, that little back stitch just secures it when you're piecing. Once you remember, sometimes I forget, especially if I'm, you know, listening to music or watching television or something. Like there, I've forgotten. I'm talking to you, I went straight into forward because I do so much running stitch. Just remember you're one step back. So one step back, two steps forward. One step back, and two steps forward, you get the idea. Um, people ask me about thimbles. I have had quite a few people asking me about thimbles. I, I just, I just don't get on with them. I just, I've even got a, um, I always thought I should, you know, should, don't should yourself. I should use thimble, because it's a thing to do. Um, but I never really liked the, the traditional, you know, the metal ones that sit on your finger like a little hat. Um, so I got one of those, I can't remember what it's called, it's a silver thimble and it's got a space cut out where your fingernail is. And I got on with that okay, but even so, I it's just another thing to have to get out and find and put on and I just like to keep it simple. So. Um, I don't like getting knots in my thread very much, so I just I just don't find I I need one. I guess I've probably got a callus on my finger um, from stitching, but again, if you want to use a thimble, I don't think it's something that's right or wrong. It's just personal preference, and also I tend not to sew fabric that's very hard to get your needle through. Um, I hear good things about Sashko thimbles, which is a little leather disc that sits actually down here somewhere. Because when you sew proper Sashko, it's quite a slightly different way of sewing. But that's the way I hold the needle. It's kind of that's not where um, it gets me. If it gets me anywhere, it's down here somewhere. Maybe I hold the needle in a strange way, which isn't covered by the thimble anyway. But, you know, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt me. So, um, I don't use a symbol. <laughs> That's the bottom line. So, one step back, two steps forward. So, again, like at the other end, I'm going to stop an inch from the end. See, that was literally a few stitches I needed. But I do want to make sure the finishing off point is quite sturdy so that when I start messing about with it to make the side seam, it's not going to come unthreaded. If you've got a sewing machine and you want to do this on the sewing machine, you go for it. I think a project can still be called slow stitch if you do some elements on the sewing machine. A slow stitch does not equal hand stitch. I'm not sure you could Hmm, that would be an interesting discussion. If you could do an entire machine stitched project and call it slow stitched. I'm not sure. Because slow stitching is not hand stitching, it's it's how you stitch. Anyway, I've talked about that a lot elsewhere. So I've done that seam. So now I'm going to turn it the right way around. Oh, and as luck would have it, look at that. You see that yellow line there? I did not plan that. That line of yellow stitching has just fallen nicely. 
Anyway, that was serendipity. That was the sewing gods making up for running my thread out just before the end. So I'm just going to finger press that seam. If you want to go and put it under the iron, you go for it. Um, I'm not going to. Actually, before I do that, and I maybe should have done this before I attached that to that, I'm going to put a little pocket on there. So, in order to make sure my pocket's the right way up. So that will be the bottom, and that will be the top. I've got a little pocket here somewhere. Where'd I put it? Where's my pocket? Oh, there it is. <clears throat> I had, the, oh, here comes Fred Fred now. I had this bit of yellow linen because I used it in last week's weekly stitch and it was sat on my desk so I thought um, we might have Fred Fred appearing in a minute. I thought that was nice against because there's quite a lot of yellow in this eco print. Um, and then I had this other bit of this that was just a scrap. It was slightly too, it was the same, um, I, I tore this to match but it was slightly too wide. So all I'm going to do is just fold that bit down a bit. I'm going to leave it raw edge. Uh, what am I going to use? Something a bit fancier than that. What about this? That's a bit... That's a, a bit much. I think that's a bit much, really. Check the aughts first. Oh, about, that's better, isn't it? Let me use that. <coughs> That's a bit of um, vintage darning thread. It's thinner than embroidery floss, and I think that's three strands. I think I'm going to keep it three strands. Find a needle. <clears throat> These are tulip embroidery needles. In general, I use size eight. In general, I think this is an eight just because it suits my cloth and my thread. Again, that's a very personal thing, depend what you're stitching with and um, what you're stitching through. But in general, I like to have as fine a needle as I can get away with to make the least, least big hole possible in the cloth. So I'm going to get rid of that loose thread. I'm going to hide my knot somewhere in there. I'm just going to do running stitch. You could do something fancy if you wanted to. I said I'm going to hide you, so go in. There we go. And you see those kind of little holes in the crochet? I'm going to just go between them, in the holes. Somewhat evenly. But I'm not going to stress about it. I think it. I'm going to go up here. I don't want to go near the seam because, you know, that's going to be a seam. But because it's a round bag, it doesn't really matter. I think I'm going to put it somewhere there like that. Um, so I'm going to just rest that on there for a minute. Um, I'm going to put it. I don't want too near the top either because this is going to get turned in like that. So I'm going to move it down slightly. And I'm sorry I'm not giving precise measurements, but yours will not be the same size as mine, probably or possibly. Um, if it is the same size as mine, then let me tell you where I'm putting it. That is two inches-ish, a generous two inches from the top and a generous two inches from the bottom because my pocket is just shy of six inches by um, four inches, six by four, size of an old photograph. Those of you who remember them, I'm sure you do. Um, and I'm just eyeballing it that it's lined up straight. I don't want to actually sew it through the top, I only want to sew it through the lining, so I'm going to have to do this. Oh, it's all going, it's all chaotic here today. <clears throat> now it's probably moved. Yeah, sew it through your lining. Really, I should have sewn it to the lining before I'd sewn the lining to that, but it's all right. I'll manage. I'll manage. So I'll get my little, um, <clears throat> you know what, pins. <clears throat> and uh, pin it on. And pin it at the two sides first and just checking it's straightish with that seam. Mm. 
You could, of course, have stitched all the way around one line of stitching and then done another line of stitching to attach it to the pocket if you wanted to. You can do pockets any number of ways. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, as fancy as you like. Um, I'm just doing it simple. Simple as possible. Because I like it like that. But it's not the only possible way of doing it. Oops, this um, yellow linen is quite, it's very fine, but it's, well, linen is in general quite sturdy, quite a sturdy fibre. It's not that bad to stitch, but somehow it's resisting the pins. It's probably because these needles, my, um, my tulip needles, I'm absolutely not on any, you know, kind of commission or anything from them. I just like them. They're so good that they pierce through better than the little pins. So I'm just going to carry on now with the same needle and cotton and sew it on. Just sew it on. Then I'm about... how far am I from the edge? Ooh. Not a quarter of an inch but not an eighth, between those two. <laughs> in millimetres, I guess it would be maybe four millimetres, is that right? I, I can't see millimetres, that's the problem. I know it makes more sense. I know that it's all divisible by 10 and it's logical and all that. But after so many years of working with inches and when I was doing, you know, norm, normal quilting and the old quarter inch seam and all that, I can see in my mind's eye a quarter of an inch, a half of an inch and all that. An inch, you know, more or less I can judge, I can judge them. But I cannot judge a centimetre. It's the same if I'm cooking. If I'm cooking, I'm weighing in pounds and ounces, I'm sorry. I can't do grams. I have to translate it into pounds and ounces if I get a recipe in grams. See, that corner is a bit wonky because of where I tore the cloth and I pulled it out of line, but I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered. I know in America, when you're baking, you use cups, don't you, rather than pounds and ounces. But a cup is not just a random cup, I'm guessing, that you just get out of your cupboard. I think it is an actual... Um, but you can buy little measuring cups, can't you? Um, but actually, when I'm baking, I don't weigh or measure anything because that's how I was taught by my granny and then my mum. Just by eye. Or you just chuck stuff in until it looks right and then it is right. And even I make sponge cakes like that. Just calculate based on the number of eggs that you use. How much flour and sugar and butter to put in with it. And they always come out okay. They always get eaten anyway, so... I can't be going that badly wrong. So, I'm nearly along this one side and my thread's going to run out, so I'm going to have to get more, I think. We'll see. I might be lucky. Of course, now my, my pocket is double. I did the liner, but the two pieces aren't really attached. What I could have done, if I'd wanted to, is um, before I sewed it onto the, the lining, I could have done some more stitching to, onto the pocket itself. Stitching sturdies things up in itself, you know. Or again, you could have put some wadding or interfacing or felt or something like that in the middle if you wanted it to be sturdier. So I'm coming up the other side. Am I going to get away with my thread? I wished I'd had more of this. <clears throat> you, you, I mean, you know, when, when I'm eco-printing these days, I do have a rough idea how things are going to look just because of experience of how I do it. It's, it's very much something that you can be taught by other people. Um, 
how to do it. I'm just having a look at, yes, I left the top a bit flappy. You can be taught by other people how to do it, but you, you need to do it yourself with your own leaves, your own vegetation, your own water, your own method, your own means of mordanting. If you don't know what that means, I will get into that at some future date. Um, but there are so many variables. So there are guidelines and, and um, you know, to follow. But you can ev even, you know, leaves at different times of years have different effects and even leaves on the same plant at the same time of year growing on one side can have a different effect to the leaves growing on the other side of the plant. It's, and that's why I find it endlessly fascinating. It's also why some people find it frustrating because they want predictable 100% results. Well then, I would say maybe eco-printing isn't for you. Um, so anyway, right. So that's that part done. Um, another loose end. So it's only attached round its bottom edge. And I'm going to go and finger press it a little bit. And how I want to finger press it is so that the lining goes slightly behind the um, the outer part. Just ever, can you see that? Ever, ever so, so when you hold it flat on, you don't see the lining. I don't want it like that. Because when I'm sewing it onto my base in a minute, I want to sew it just through this. And I want it to, where's the base? Here it is. I want it to sit against the base like that. And not have the lining showing. You know? But if, you know, you do you. That's how I'm going to do it. So I'm just pressing it in. I don't know if I'm going to put pins in it or not. I suspect I'm not. I think I'm going to just give it a little press to get it going and then I hope you can see. You know, I'm sure you know how to finger press. And then as I go, I'll make sure I'm getting it in the right place. So this is where it gets a bit awks, awkward. Um, when you make your cloth twiny base, that it'll have two sides. It'll look different because of the way you make the stitch. So on this side, you've got these kind of straightish spokes coming out. And on this side, you'll get these little V-shaped diamond type. Can you see? So when you've made your own one, basically look at it and just decide which you want to be the bottom that sits that it sits on and which you want to be the inside. I prefer the look of the ones with the lines and I think I'm gonna mm, I don't know see now I have to sit here for hours and imagine do I look more at the bottom of my bag or do I look more inside my bag when there's nothing in it mm, just I'm just gonna do that just gonna do that make a decision so then I need to just start somewhere now the one place I'm not going to start is here because here is where I ended you see there's a tiny weeny jump and I don't want to have all the seams and awkwardness all going on in the same place. So I'm just going to go away from that somewhere here. And I'm going to leave my inch extra. Um, and I'm, first of all, I'm going to anchor my thread inside there somewhere. With maybe a back stitch. Or to, you could absolutely use a thicker thread to do this if you wanted the thread to be more visible. And I'm just going to, again, making sure that my lining's tucked in, just going to do a little whip stitch all the way around. And I probably will edit some of this out because it's probably going to take me quite a while. But I'll do a bit for you to see. So I'm just taking little bites through the twine. And you see, through the twine and through the the top piece from the of the cloth. And as I go along, I'm just making sure I tuck that lining in so it doesn't show on the outside. And I guess my stitches are somewhere about an eighth of an inch apart. But if you want to use a thicker thread and bigger stitches, you go for it. You just get a slightly different look. But I want I wanted to use this thin thread and have it kind of a, not invisible. It won't be invisible, invisible, but not very visible, shall we say? 
No, I didn't go quite enough into that, and that thread is quite uh, that cloth is quite fragile, so I'm going to take a slightly bigger bite of that. And this, to me, again, is all part of the the slow stitch process. It's just noticing, and especially when you use old cloths, you have to kind of take account of the fact that some of them might be more fragile than others, and they might require a slightly more gentle treatment or they might need a bit more support um, but to me that's part of the hope you can see I'm not doing that naughty thing of pulling it towards me to me that's part of the of the enjoyment of it and when you whip stitch the ideal is that when you come over with your thread that's going to be visible you go as straight as possible over the seam that you're making and then as you put your needle in you angle it f forward you know on your journey that way it's not going like that over there that makes your stitches smaller and um, a bit neater And um, I'd have to give it some thought whether it makes them sturdier or not. My instinct is that it does, but I don't know why that's my instinct. Because I suppose the thread's going a shorter distance. So it's under less, um, under less strain. Okay, so I'm coming around to the end here. Um, so I want to make sure that, um, you know, where I started an inch away from the edge here and here, that what I'm stitching down to the base is joined. So if you can see um, that's the beginning of that seam and this seam ends here do you see what I mean so I need it to lay down like that so I'm going to just go into there a little bit and do a little bit more of the seam uh, I think I just need to go along a couple more stitches first this is what I mean by wiggle room so I had that extra bit my thread's a bit short, but we'll manage, we'll manage. So all I'm going to do is just open that up again there like that. Turn it round, maybe. Get my, make sure it's pulled up tight, get my thread through. I mean, this may be different for you, this is just how it worked out. So I'm just going to pull my thread through. And um, like so, match up those two seams. Hope you can see. I've actually moved the thing up a little bit because in a minute when I start sewing up the sides, I needed a bit more height. So I'm going to start there with a the back stitch again. And another back stitch. Can't hurt, can it? It's really cold in here. I did put the radiator on first thing when I got up and then I went and walked the dogs. This is now the morning of yesterday. Yesterday was, you know, it's a day later. <laughs> um, so yeah, I got up early, came and put my radiator on, walked the dogs. Broke the ice on the horse's water. It's freezing here. Lit the range. Well, got the range going. It hadn't gone completely out. We're, we're all wood heating apart from here. I've got a little electric radiator. Potted about a bit, answered many of your lovely um, messages and comments, <coughs> and um, I guess the radiator's been on for a couple of hours, but it's still cold. My hands are cold. Anyway, I'll warm up. So I finished that seam um, enough, I hope. So let's put it all back how it should be. So. I'm going to need to get a new bit of thread and I'm going to continue, it's a bit loose there but it'll tighten up, just going to continue with my whip stitching. I'm going to match those two like that for the side seam-ish and then I'm going to continue the whip stitching here and a little bit more here to make sure that's all stitched down and that those two side seams are roughly the same size. hope that all makes sense. Excuse my arm. 
got my Icelandic jumper on that I made. I've got a few that I've made with Icelandic wool. Um, and it's one of my warmest jumpers, but still. I should have gloves on, really, but I don't think I can stitch wearing gloves. I could have fingerless gloves, I suppose. Anyway. Uh, make a knot. See, I can't, I can't make a knot because my hands are so cold. Right. Hide the knot somewhere inside. And then we can get on with the side seam. Just go in there somewhere, it doesn't matter, does it? Doesn't matter. As long as it's hid. Whoops. I'm sorry for the um, you know. You know how it is if you get if you live somewhere where it gets cold. When you get cold hands. Um, come through to where I should be. Cheers down there somewhere. Go in the right place. Just help me out here. Come on, needle. There. Thank you. Right. So still pushing that lining inside. So I'm stitching through the it's a bit fiddly this, you know, these junctions are always fiddly, aren't they? So I'm just still only stitching through the um the outer part and not the lining. I'm saying it as if you might have forgotten because it was yesterday, but for you it's not yesterday, it's all one video, unless it ends up being two parts. I don't know, we'll see how long it gets. And a couple more stitches there. And now, yeah, now I need to jump across. Just going to, you know, jump across into the beginning part and do a couple more stitches there. Can you see? I hope you can see. Ouch, I stabbed myself. But luckily I didn't feel it because my hands are so cold. <laughs> there we go. Every cloud has a silver lining. Okay, I'm just going to take one more on the same spot just because I'm, you know, paranoid about things coming undone. So now I'm going to leave that attached, but now I want to join the side seams. So I'm going to separate the liner and the outer and I'm going to get one one way um, let me stick that somewhere where I can get at it again I'm just going to park that somewhere in there for a minute so I'm going to pull the, the outer part one way and the liner the other way do you see? do you see? do you see? and then I'm going to go back to where the needle is and the first and so firstly I'm going to sew up the side seam. Get the cat hair off it. The ubiquitous cat hair. Now do you see that my backing fabric is long is white sticks out further than the um you know the collage fabric. So I'm just gonna make sure the collage fabric lines up. I don't think I'm gonna bother trimming because it's so soft. You could trim it back if you wanted to. Um that needle's now a little bit in the way. Make sure the thread's all coming through. Put it down there. And I'm going to get some of my little pins. So make sure that you've got the lining pulled away, out of the way, and just match up the seam of the, the outer. And um, again, if you want to measure and draw a seam line, you go for it. I'm just going to um, get it somewhat in the right place. And this again, if it was something you wanted to go and do on your sewing machine, you absolutely can. I have no, no qualms with you doing that in case you were worried. <laughs> you do what you like, you do what you like. Right, that'll do, that'll do pig. So um, I need to come through. I'm through. Do you see that's gone through that little stitch? I don't want that. Can I get back under that stitch? Am I being really pernickety? There we go, that's better. So I'm going to pull that somewhat firmly, not enough to... Then I'm going to go under there like that. Do you see where I'm going? To get myself right into the corner of that seam. 
and pull it through. And I'm going to start with, you've guessed it, a back stitch. Oh, I've gone through the decorative thread there. That's... Come on, behave yourself. Oh dear, we're having all kinds of problems this morning. There we go, and I might even do two back stitches. Just to be sure, to be sure. Right, that pin's now in my way. <clears throat> and I'm going to do the same kind of piecing stitch, I think. Of a little, it's quite hard through two layers with, in case you hadn't understood by now with my cold hands. But they'll warm up with work. In fact, I'm doing one step forward and one step back, apparently. <laughs> Seems to be what's happening here. Um, you can absolutely just do a normal running stitch, probably. I'm probably over-engineering. In fact, I'm going to just go back to... Oh, I'm going to be here all day. And I'm sure it'll be fine. If you do a smallish running stitch, you could also do a complete back stitch. I don't think it's really necessary. You see, I'm just eyeballing roughly, you know, a roughly even seam allowance. Um, in, in traditional piecing, patchwork piecing, you do a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm sorry, what is that in centimetres? Is that uh, millimetres? Seven, seven somethings? I, I, it's something like that, I think. If you're if you're metric, I apologise. I think it's a quarter inch. About that. That's a good centimetre, I think. Centimetre and a half. I don't know. I, I don't know why I'm even trying because I'm probably <laughs> confusing you more than helping you. Um, if you're metric, I hope you're used to listening to old dinosaurs like me going on about inches and quarter inches and translating it in your head. Come on, warming up the old fingers. Another pin, we're nearly there. So when I've done this side seam, I'm just going to turn, break my thread off, finish off and then go back down to the, the bottom, the base of the bag and do exactly the same. Come on, up the lining. Um, and then we can have a look at how we're going to make the channel at the top. To put, I'm going to put a drawstring through, some cloth twine, the same way that I did with the rice bag. Um, but I think instead of, if you've seen the rice bag video, which is a, a basically a box, a four-sided square box, I put a little loop on each of the four sides, so four little cloth loops to thread the drawstring through. I think on this one, because it's a round bag, I'm going to put two long loops, if that makes sense, one, the, one each side. So it makes a sort of almost complete drawstring bag. I think that's what I'm going to do. So it kind of, you know, like a, what do you call them? Do they call them duffel bags? I don't know. I am going to go right to the very top of the seam, I think. Um, because I think also what's going to happen is I'm going to turn this seam in and whip stitch around when I've got the drawstring. That may change when I get there. But obviously I'll keep you informed. Right, I'm going to do a couple of back stitches. And then I'm going to do the loop-de-loop, -loop, which is pulled nearly all the way through. And then I'm going to go through twice. And then pull it up. And then anchor that like that. And I'm probably doing several more steps than are strictly necessary, but make sure I'm not going through to the wrong side. There we go. And snip it off. Um, so then I'm going to turn it around. Park that for a minute. <coughs> And um, do the same thing with my lining. So 
again it's once you get going it's pretty straightforward it's just sewing in a straight line um, you might just have to fiddle about a bit I'm going to start here with the matched at the top end top edge and then I'm going to go back down to the bottom edge so that quilters among you will know when you're pinning a border on a quilt for example that you pin each side and then you go to the middle and then you even you know in case there's a bit of discrepancy in the two pieces it's that principle basically I think this should be okay but you know it's only a little length so then when you've got your two ends pinned you can do that a little bit and make sure everything's lining up if you had a longer length what I'd do is I'd then go and pin the middle and then do this either side that's a, from my quilty days. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> I haven't got a cold anymore. It's just kind of win winterness. You know, winterness when you've been outside in the cold and then you come back in to the relative warm. There we go. So just get my bit of needle and my bit of needle. My needle and my bit of thread back. Is it long enough? I think so. I don't really want to have to stop halfway and get a new bit. Um, and I'm going to make sure again that that's out of the way because I just I really want this junction here to be nicely closed up. And um, I'm going to come through from the back. I'm just pinching it with my thumb and finger, making sure I'm right in that corner. And I'm not just going to start sewing with the knot. To my mind, the knot is just there to hold it until you secure. So then, you know, there are people that say you shouldn't knot. Well, sorry, but sorry, sorry, not sorry. I'm knotting. Um, that you know, and you probably could just start with the back stitch. But if I try that, then invariably I pull it right through before I've got the back stitch in. So the knot is there at least to hold it while you do your back stitching. So I'm going to do. Um, just normal running stitch. Again, you could do the two steps forward, one step back thing. I'm just doing this for speed, relative speed. This cloth is so lovely. This um, sheet, I wished I'd had more of it. <laughs> it's always the, the way, isn't it? You. It must have been a whole, I must have had a whole sheet of it at one point. Although actually, you know, I think of it, I don't think it was my sheet. I think I was with a friend in England. Yeah, that's where it came from. I was with a friend in England playing in her studio. She's not an eco-printer, but I was staying with her. and um, So we had a play day with me and my friend and a couple of other friends. And um, we did some eco-printing. And I think this was some of her old sheet. So I've only got a little bit. It's just the right kind of openness in the weave to be soft, but it still feels sturdy. It doesn't feel like linen. Feel it does feel like cotton. Linen can be a little bit harder to stitch through sometimes. Don't do that. And um, it's got the yellow in it because we used um, alum acetate as a mordant. Sometimes I don't mordant. Um, if you don't know anything about eco printing, you've probably got no clue what I'm talking about. A mordant is um, usually a metal salt that you add either to the cloth or some people put it in the, the pot when they're cooking, when they're cooking their bundles. And the mordant, it comes from the Latin. Mordar, a French word for bite is mordre. Listen to my <laughs> sound. Mordre. Appalling French accent. I do apologise if you're French. Um, which means to bite. And a mordant makes the dye bite into the, the actual chemical construction of the cloth rather than just sit on the surface. That's what a mordant is. Um, and alum as a mordant, alum acetate, 
which is relatively non-toxic. It's used in, in pickle preserving and things like that, so you can eat it. I wouldn't recommend drinking great baths of it, but anyway. Um, Alamacetate brings out the yellows. That was the point of that whole witter. Alamacetate tends to bring out the yellows in the, the, the chemicals that are in the plants. So if you use alum as a mordant, you get quite a lot of yellow. Right, I'm up to the end. I'm going to do again a couple of back stitches. Just got enough thread. Loop de loop. Through twice, pull it up, and I'm going there into the seam because there's no thickness there to go through. I don't want to be in the inside of my bag. Cut it off, and then we'll have a look at how it looks. Get myself a bit of room. So now I'm going to pull the get hold of its bottom. Pardon me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and pull it out the right way. It's still a little bit up in your face, isn't it? I'm sorry, let me just fiddle a minute. Um, stick my hand in there and fiddle about. Now let's have a look at this. Oh, it's a bit puckery there. Can I pull that all into shape? You see it's got a bit puckery. With all my best efforts. Uh, do you see? I'm not going to hide it from you. I think it's all right. I think I can live with it. Let's feel it. Can you hear it? It sounds nice. Right, so then it is really up in your face. Um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to um, stop a minute and because <laughs> all you can see is giant work-worn winter hands and not a lot of bag. I think I'm going to stop a minute and readjust the thing. <laughs> 